Well, you know, the Marquesas, it's a really, really special place for a, a number of reasons. Oh, that's so awesome. He's got his fin up. Oh, man, he's, he's, he's got something, Rich. He's got something that he's trying to eat right now. And you're like, you know, let's just put on some shark chum, and we'll just troll and motor down the bank. We'll look for permit. Now, that's my idea of shark fishing, Tom. <laughs> if the hammer comes in, great. If not, let's catch a permit. Yes! Look at that guy! That is a shark. The biggest fish I've ever caught. Woo! I'm going to relax. Oh, my God! Saltwater Experience with Captain Tom Rowland and Captain Rich Tudor. I'm gonna go right straight to the Marquesas. Awesome. Beautiful day. We hit the weather just right. Might have a little weather coming in on us in the next couple of days, but it looks like we almost have a little wind out of the almost north. We might get some. Like blue sky, huh? That's what it's supposed to do. Um, actually, blow from the north in the next couple of days. Today's supposed to be light and variable. Well, my first time down here, I don't probably 15 years ago, I just came down with a couple of buddies, and that's what we want to do is go out to the Marquesas. So we just stumbled our way out there, and you know, still managed to see a lot of permit. And I remember seeing so many sharks out there on this white sand. That was really cool. I'd never seen that before. You might see those today, too. Good. That is a wild, wild place. I mean, you know, we've been up and fished in the Everglades and we fish, you know, on the edge of civilization, but really when you go down there to the Marquesas, you know, the, you gotta overcome the geography. And what I mean by that is if somebody wants to leave their house in Miami and trailer their boat down, they gotta trailer past Key Largo, Isla Mirada, right here at Hawks Cay, Marathon, Sugarloaf. They gotta go all the way down to Key West put the boat in, and then go 25 miles. And it's like, all of those places have good fishing. That's the case you with know? me. I mean, that's the case with me. I mean, I've been down there a few times with you, and but I mean, I hadn't been there all year. I mean, I hadn't been there once this year, and, and I mean, I know it's so great, but I mean, I just fish out of here. But I mean, it was nice to, you know, it was an adventure. Well, you know, the Marquesas, it's a really, really special place for a, a number of reasons. First of all, the geography puts it way out there, way out of reach for most people. Secondly, on almost any flat out there, you could catch a world record of just about anything that you're looking for, and it's just a wild place. And you know, one of the coolest things that I remember is you and I are sitting there talking, running along, and you're kind of like, "You ever see uh, any big hammerheads out here?" <laughs> like, yeah, you know, actually, you know, I do. I see a lot of big hammerheads out here, and in fact, I see them, you know, right along this stretch where we are. And then you were like, there's a hammerhead right there. <laughs> there he is, right there. See his fin? Just drag this up to him. And delete it whole. He's up there eating something right now. Awesome. Are you going to do this? Yeah. You know, it's, it's the dorsal hammerhead. Was that? It's, it's yeah, the hammerhead is a, is a shark that's so easily identifiable from a distance because it almost looks like, it looks like somebody took his dorsal and then moved it forward because it's more straight up than any other shark. And you see that thing and out longer. of the water, you know exactly what it is. Oh, that's so awesome. He's got his fin up. He's right here. Oh, man, he's, he's, he's got something, Rich. He's got something that he's trying to eat right now. What is he doing? There was actually something in his mouth and he was like feeding on the surface. And then once he was done with that, you know, we, we scrambled and tried to get ready so fast because you were so jealous of the big fish that I caught <laughs> last year and you wanted to try to try your hand at that even though it would have pulled you out of the boat. It's a one shot deal, man. You can't. I'm trying as best I, I can to get it ready. I know, but when you get, when you're, when you're ready okay, and you I'm get ready. out there, he's gonna come up and try to eat it. He's coming to you, man. Turn around and look at him. Coming right to the boat. Yeah, I see him. I'm very I'm trying to bring you right in front of me. So, 
we were trying to get in front of it, and and but, but uh, it seemed like he just totally lost interest. We we, we got the bait in front of him, and he swam right by the boat. You, man, he he had already just he had already had a meal, and he was on his way. Wait, I think I see him out there. I think I got him in way that out hole. There. In that hole. For oh, sure. Here, in that no, hole. he's right here. Oh, he's on. Keep he's it out. Keep it out. Keep it out. He's coming. Now you got a little spook. There he goes. I mean, that's just a small example of how wild that place is. We're, we're really lucky to have it, you know. We're really lucky to have that and, and be able to go out there and for a guide. And you, it's a no-lose situation. Yeah, we, what we'll do is we'll just go permit fishing. We'll leave that back there. Yeah. And, uh, you know, every now and then we'll check it out. Every now and then look and see if a giant dorsal fin's approaching. Permit at the Marquesas, baby. I like it. That's what it's all about. Striking silver. The Hawks K Saltwater Experience is brought to you by Suffix, drawing the line on performance. By Yellowfin, only in a Yellowfin. By Bass Pro Shops, your adventure starts here. By Hawks K Resort, it's all about the water. By Quantum, fishing at a quantum level. And by Motor Guy, Strike King, and Guideline Sunglasses. It's a great trip, man. I'll tell you, one of the things that was so cool to me is we saw that hammerhead, we baited him up, and you're like, you know, let's just put out some shark chum, and we'll just troll motor down the bank, we'll look for permit, and we'll keep the shark bait out. Well, I mean, here we are, we're going down the bank, and I mean, you know, we've got our shark rod out, we got our chum, but as we're, we're doing that, I mean, we're spotting for permit, we're ready. Yeah. I, mean, it, I mean, that was the best shark fishing I ever did. I mean, it's just, I mean, it's incredible. I mean, to have all these fish in that one area, on the flats, in that right. shallow water, it's just such a rich environment. And it's a good way to do it, you know, to just troll the motor down through there, and you're really, you're really covering two, two different fisheries, and if you're, you're having great success with the permit, and let's reel the shark rods in, which is what we ended up doing, let's reel them in, Let's let's go after these permits. We've got Fishing great good, sun. Man. Everything's looking good. Let's let's go out there and, and do it. It really does look awesome. I mean, man, if we can't do the permit now, they're not here. This is perfect. The first one we caught, I, I, I had just seen that little push going over that flat there, and I threw in there, just not even being able to see the bodies of the fish at all, and just threw in front of them and just instantly. <laughs> come on, come on. I'm gonna go under you, under you, under you. Zero. Good job. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, that was cool. There's a bunch of them in there. Woo. Nice job, man. That was neat. Just There'll a little more. push there. He's gonna smoke me. I got him on that 10 pound too. Well, that's my idea of shark fishing, Tom. <laughs> if the hammer comes in, great. If not, let's catch a permit. Yeah, that's the way to do it. It's, it's funny, you know, Isla Mirada is known as a bonefish destination of the world, or the Bahamas, or, you know, people travel across the world to go fish for blue marlin or black marlin. Well, for the permit, it's definitely the Marquesas. I mean, no place has what we have in the Marquesas, which is the amount of permit, the size of the fish, and the abundance of the variety of situations that the permit live. I mean, all the way from the reef in 150 feet of water to the shallow water wrecks to the, sh to the flats, there is absolutely no place that I've ever been and no place that I've ever heard of that has all of those situations and the number of fish and the size of fish that we do in the Marquesas. That's awesome, man. Permanent the Marquesas, baby. I like it. That's what it's all about. Striking silver. Man, strong. Woo. I used to go there and only look for the tailors, and that's a mistake. You know, it's really fun to find them and really fun to fish for them like that, but they're spooky, and I wasn't catching very many. It wasn't until I started fishing deeper water, like what I showed you, that, you know, the fish are there. You can easily see them. You know, it's only this much too sure. deep for them to tail, and I found that that just makes them so much more comfortable, so much easier to catch, and I just started catching so, so many more and learning more about the permit. When you look at those fish, you wonder how they could possibly be camouflaged when they turn their side I like know. that. And I mean, we saw, you know, five or six of them that were just 
You couldn't even see them. They, were they just, just reflect the bottom. And when they turn to the side, they reflect, you know, the sun. But they are exceptionally well camouflaged. Oh man, he is gorgeous. Gorgeous. My favorite fish, without question. He is gorgeous. Look at that permit. Just surf him in here when you get his head up. Right past me. <laughs> he ain't quite done yet. Not quite. <laughs> Maybe one more of those in him. These things, just that V tail, man, they're just all power. And then he rests and he uses that wide body to rest a little. Any fish with that fork tail like that, yeah. powerful fish. Swing him that way a little bit. Yeah! That's what Mark Case's permit. Do. Usually they're gentlemen. There he's we a, go. He's got that is nice, man. Woo! Let me know that hook. Thanks, bud. I love coming to the Mark Cases with Tom Roll. Awesome. <laughs> Look at that guy. That's good. That's nice, man. I like that. That's great. I mean, I can't believe that was such a subtle little push and there was five or six fish that big coming across that little bar. Sure. Very shallow, but you know, these fish, you know, a lot of times they'll turn on their side, even like that, yeah. and swim just like that, just like he's doing there. Swim on his side and go, go just like that, out That's of there cool. like a flounder. That's awesome, man. He looks good to go. He's healthy and ready. Nice. Woo, there he goes. Polarized sunglasses are an invaluable tool for the fishermen. We all know that. It cuts the glare, we can see the fish in the water, it protects our eyes from the harmful sun rays. But uh, as we all get older, we uh, sometimes need a little extra help there. We can't see up close when we're tying those knots. My dad, for instance, he has to put on his bifocal glasses to be able to tie his knots. And then he has to put on his big thing of polarized sunglasses over there, which uh, is not always the most stylish thing and or effective. Um, but uh, this last year I found them a product that, that really works great. Guideline sunglasses, which is a polarized sunglass that I like to use, came out with this new feature this year um, with a built-in bifocal. Can't hardly tell that they've got a bifocal in there. Just in integrated into the sunglasses right under there. People don't even know you're wearing it um, and it can help you tie those knots or do the things up close and personal. Got my dad a pair of these. He absolutely loves them. They look good. Um, he, can, he can see down to tie his knots. He can uh, you know, see the fish in the water, protects his eyes from the harmful rays. Really does everything you could ask for. Um, it's a great product. They're available at Bass Pros. Check them out when you're ready to upgrade. As a fishing guide, your your first obligation to anglers is to go out there and you got to find them fish. You know that is that is what the motivation is. And, and the Marquesas was the place that I, I fished. I, I I think there was one year when I was in the Marquesas, almost 325 days out of out of 365. And and so as my career of guiding started to slow down, I was looking for an opportunity to go back out there and and just see a different level than Marquesas. So I had uh, gotten a, a grant from the state of Florida to photograph underwater landscapes in the Marquesas and, and uh, I had an old funky house but a little 26 foot house boat called the Huck Finn. Um, didn't have any um, generator or any electrical power, no screens on the window. I took that out there for six weeks. I brought a canoe with me and I brought a flat skiff and some fly rods and some snorkeling gear. And, and uh, I had a chance to swim back into the mangroves and, and uh, swim with the baby tarpon and, and watch how they sort of would weave their way in and out of the mangrove roots. And, and it, was a, it was a great six weeks in, in the Marquesas. Um, I didn't know what to expect from it. I didn't know what I was gonna write about. Um, in fact, for the first week I was there, you know, I'm thinking, you know, I've got a contract to write a book. You know, what? Where do I start? How do How do I begin this? I hadn't written a book before, but um, you know, it just it just gave me this this great sense of energy and great sense of peace. And and um, the book wrote itself. 
it's a wild place, and um, there, there's so few places it seems like anymore where, where you can be in, in a truly wild place, especially this close to civilization, especially this close to Duval Street with all the, uh, all the craziness that goes on. You know, um, 45 minutes after leaving Duval Street, you can, you can be in this, this wonderland, and um, uh, that's one of the things that I, I love about Key West. And after we caught that, after I caught that first one, I was like, you know, so excited about it. And you're just like so confident that we were going to go up there and just see fish after fish. And, and, and you know, the light came out. And we got that tide right. And, and the next shot, I remember I threw over, over him, you know, too, too, too conservative, didn't, didn't put it in there. And you hit this guy right on the head. I mean, you threw it in there and purposely made a splash, you know, because he was in that water depth just deep enough. And I was thinking, you know, you're going to spook him. Oh, nice job! Nice job, Tom! I remember he turned jet black. You know, a fish that was almost invisible down on the bottom turned jet black and just came up there and just wolfed your crab right in front of you. I was, I mean, I was impressed, man. That was cool. He was right under the boat. That's a big fish, dude. That is a very nice one. Dude, he landed right on his head. He came That's up to right do. to the top. That was awesome. What you probably don't realize when you're just there and it's a beautiful day, you can see in the water as clearly as we can, is that you're really fishing almost five feet of water. So a crab hitting the surface doesn't, it's not, it doesn't have the effect that it does in Flamingo when we're fishing for redfish in five and a half inches of water or bonefish on, in downtown Alamorada. I mean, it's five feet of water, you can throw it in there. And on top of that, if you lead them too far, they're not going to see it. It's got to be right in there close to them and, and fall at the natural speed that a crab does. And, and boy, if they see it, they're going to eat it. Well, that was really neat, though. I mean, you, pl you plumped that right on top of him, and he heard it hit the water and was looking for it. And then he just came right up on top of him. That was awesome. He just turned totally black. I mean, even now, he's, he's, he's got that silver color to him. But I mean, when he, I guess he got excited, and that just black went right down his back. When I first saw this guy, he was on the bottom, just grazing very, very, very slowly. Just Almost grazing. Yeah, and he's right there. Yeah, he was really close. We could have easily gone by him without seeing him. And I threw him in there, and he that's when he lit up, just like you're talking about. Look at that. I've never seen one swim upside, upside down. down like that. I've never seen one do that. That is amazing to me. <laughs> Man, every day, it doesn't matter what you're doing out here, you see something you've never seen before. Look at that. Okay, ready? I swing him right to you. Come this way a little bit, turn him around, and he's coming right by you. Grab him. There you go. Nice, yeah. That's the way, man. That's All the way to right. do it. Exactly. Swing him over here. You've taught me well. That is a gorgeous fish, Tom. I can't not believe how his back turned so black when, when, when we saw him. I mean, that fish was invisible. He was in water shallower than this, in a foot and a half, two feet of water. I couldn't see him at all. I mean, I said, Put him in the said, water and said, check it out how, he, how, how well camouflaged he actually is, if you can hold him. Yeah, if I can, that's a big if. That's awesome. When I mean, he's but, there, you're just seeing that the small black line is all you can see from the top. And then when he turns, you know, he's reflecting the grass all around him. <laughs> he's about ready. Yeah, I'd say. Nice. What an awesome fish, man. That is awesome. Well, good, man. Let him go. Let's see if we can catch something else. All right, buddy. You ready? See you later. The Hawks K Saltwater Experience is brought to you by Yellowfin. Only in a Yellowfin. By Lorance. We lead, we find, you win by Mercury, number one on the water. The Florida Keys in Key West, come as you are. And by Thumbdinger, Navionics, Scott Flyrods, and Loadmaster. I knew, you know, the tide was right. 
everything was coming together and I had 100% confidence that we were going to be able to go in there and find fish all the way down there. And I got yeah, one right okay. here. Two of them. Three go. of them. Go. Here he comes. He just ate me. Nice got him. job. You got him? Yep. Nice job, dude! Hey, but he got, he got insane. You. I mean, the, the further we went, the more it got. I mean, it was yeah. a couple, and then it was a single, and then it was a school 20, and then, and then I remember... A school of 100. 100. I threw in there. I mean, I saw him, and I was thinking, that's got to be Jax. I'm right in the middle of all of them. Hey, just wait a second. Just set the hook. There's 100 of them. He one ate it off, off my, my, my crab off. Oh, my gosh. He Get ate another, my crab right another off. another crab. I'll catch a fish right here. Got him. No way. No way! Hey, my crab right Justin, off. Look at him. Let me grab another crab. Here. Hit the GPS real quick. I'll, I'll get it. I'll get it. You get a crab. You know, it's kind of funny like, like that. You know, you're talking about that you have never experienced that. Well, a lot of people have never experienced that. So, you know, if you've never seen that, it's hard to imagine that you could do that with, with permit. But once you've seen it and you realize what you can do, it's like, oh, I see now. You know, maybe we're fishing just a little bit deeper than, than some That's people That's what fish. I said after that day. I said, oh. <laughs> you, were, you know, and the thing is, I mean, you were like, we can just do this all day. We could. I mean, we could just keep going. Jerk it. Woo, yeah. Yes. You got it now. <laughs> you nice got it now. Nice job, man. Way to go, dude. Look at that circle hook. Get some. Every time. That's beautiful. Accommodations provided by Hawks K Resort Marina and Villas. It's all about the water.